Teachers, what's the darkest thing you've seen from a student? I was working at an after-school program as a director site manager and one of my employees radioed me needing my immediate assistance at the playground. I raced out there. The employees pulled me aside and said that I needed to look at Lil Billy's back since it was dark outside she couldn't tell if it was scratch marks or burns. She said she had put in time out. Standing against the basketball pole and he was trying to lean up against it but kept making weird spastic moves every time he leaned against it so she asked to look at his back after he said it hurt. I asked Lil Billy to follow me to the nurse's office. Leaving the door open the school staff was all gone but there are cameras everywhere and just in case I didn't want anyone thinking I was doing something inappropriate with the kid since I had no idea what I was about to see and or hear. It took everything in my power to not audibly gasp once I lifted the back of his shirt. I counted at least seven belt loop bruises and five lash marks. I asked where he got them from to which he replied, my dad, I got a bad grade. This kid got beat with both ends of a belt because he got AP in conduct. I ended up asking his permission to take pictures and I immediately called CPS. When I showed up to work the next day at 2 p.m., city and the ISD police were there. I found out from the CPS person, that the woman listed as his mom was the dad's girlfriend and she knew the beatings were going on and that this apparently wasn't the first time. CPS and the city police refused to let the girlfriend or dad see him good. Mom lived in a neighboring town so they removed him immediately and sent him there. That's the last I heard of anything. Student would hide in the bushes trying to get near female teacher's feet had to advise staff to wear closed toe sandals, shoes because he was so interested. Discovered he was drawing women with their feet cut off as well as drawing severed feet in high heels. My mom was a school nurse and always came home with some crazy stories. One of the most blood-curdling things she has was a girl that was really into cutting to the point where she had a scar that covered the majority of the outside of her bicep. The girl one day decided that she hated her scar and wanted to get rid of it. At home, by herself, she decided she was going to get rid of them. In her bathroom, she took a knife to her arm, cutting a 4 by 6 piece of scar tissue that was just under an inch thick out of her arm. She the proceeded to stitch it up using a needle and thread and bandage it with gauze all by herself. She then woke up and went to school the next day so she could go to my mom's office and ask if it looked infected. It was. Not a teacher but I did do a lot of volunteer work with little kids. One of the fifth grade boys was caught grabbing random girls and trying to pull them into the supply closet and try to kiss them. He was even caught trying to grab the butts or without his hand on the seat as they started to sit down. When we finally got to talk to his parents turned out his grandpa was teaching him these things. The weirdest part was when we questioned the grandpa about it his response was who cares. They're just little girls. Grandpa's a piece of shit. Had a student in my class as a sophomore. Every morning her junior year she would come in and chat in the morning. One day out of the blue it stopped. In fact, she wasn't at school at all anymore. Fast forward three months. She shows up and looks broken. I ask her what's going on. After quite a bit of hesitation, she tells me that she went to a party and was DD. No alcohol in her system. However, she woke up the next morning and couldn't remember a thing about the previous night. A couple weeks later, she finds out she is pregnant. She was a virgin before that night. Roofied and raped. She had only told her counselor and now me. I haven't had a chance to talk to her due to COVID. Her outlook and demeanor was night and day before and after that party. I taught welding and metal sculpture at the high school level for a year. One morning, one of my students a quiet, awkward, but really nice young man came into class and asked me for a band-aid. I asked him what for and he replied that it was for a burn class hadn't started yet for the day. He showed me and it was a fresh second degree burn that was already blistering. It was in the shape of an A. Some kids if I'm going to be honest. They were bottom performers and troublemakers from a different class of mine had swiped a small metal letterer from one of my supply bins, heated it with a lighter, and then branded this kid on the morning school bus. He had let the kids do it because he really wanted to fit in. He didn't have many friends and these kids had seemed cool because they were always acting out. As a mandatory reporter, I reported it. The police got involved. Other than that I have no idea what else happened. 
I was student teaching when I was 21. I had a class of high school seniors. One boy was caught telling his friend he planned to rape me in my car. I ended up getting transferred about two months into my student teaching experience. I've been assaulted before, so it felt even worse. I am an English teacher and I am the sponsor of the school's comic book and anime club. This year, I managed to take my club to a convention, and many of them had several firsts, such as meeting celebrities, LAR ping, participating in panels, speaking to professional artists, and just being with a larger fandom community. Upon our return, one of my members, a 16-year-old girl, asked to speak to me privately. She proceeded to tell me that she had been molested by her father and uncle ever since she was 12. On her 16th birthday, she finally had enough of the abuse and she contacted the police and told them everything. Before the investigation could begin, her uncle committed suicide out of shame. Her father was about to do the same, but she was able to convince him not to do it. He is now facing trial for his crimes. She then thanked me, and said that the two days we spent at the convention were the happiest days of her life, and it allowed her to feel like a child for the first time in four years. It was the proudest moment of my career. I was a substitute for a while several years ago. I did the special education classes mostly. Everything from kids who simply had a learning disability to students with severe disabilities such as ASD and behavioral issues. One kid had a very low IQ and suffered from ADHD. He would come in every day an absolute mess. He was beyond violent and had zero control over his emotions. It's common to see those sorts of issues in some of these kiddos, but we didn't understand why it was this bad. He had medication prescribed and on file to help with some of his issues. Well come to find out. Mom had been keeping his medication to do only God knows what with. He wasn't getting anything to help with these very real problems. Eventually this kid lost his shit on the teacher's aid in the class and the school had to expel him. One class one was in a lot had mostly kids with ADHD, dyslexia, mild behavioral issues, and I really connected with them. It was a challenge, but I loved them. There was a boy, maybe 10 years old, who would talk to me quite a bit about his father who was in a local rehab program for meth abuse. It was a religious thing that kept people on a campus and had them do church stuff, labor, and volunteer work. Anyway, he would give me updates every few weeks. At the end of the year he comes up and says, Guess what, Moors, Phoenix underscore 0113, I think my dad is gonna come home. He says he's not gonna do drugs anymore and he's done at rehab. I can't wait for him to come home. He went on about how they were gonna do father-son type things. It was heartbreaking to watch a child deal with a parent in rehab for meth. He was so hopeful and there was a deep love there. I hope sincerely, every time I think of that sweet kid, his dad is healthy and present for his son. I didn't see it, but I heard it. I used to work at a shelter for at-risk girls aged 8 to 18, mainly truancy or runaway cases but some were taken from homes of abuse, drugs, sex trafficking, etc. We housed and looked after roughly 20 girls at a time when we were at full capacity. Many of them had a lot of mental and emotional issues. One of our youngest girls at the time, around age 9, was talking to an older girl around 13. Teen was nonchalantly talking about how she was raped as a young girl before she came to the shelter. Next thing I knew, at least 10 other girls who had overheard the conversation started talking about how old they were when they were raped. Some rattled off multiple ages and times when it occurred, just causally. It was chilling to hear so many young girls tell their tales. I'm not a teacher but I had an off hour in high school and I usually would use it for going home or just hanging out. I was asked by my film photography teacher if I could help with teaching by showing some of my examples and helping mostly 9th grade as I was in 11th grade at the time. I noticed one kid was really quiet and socially awkward but he had really good prints. And after a couple days I noticed a lot of film was missing and so I asked my teacher. He said that a quiet kid paid for some extra film to take home and use. I brushed it off for a while until it came to show some of the prints to the class. The quiet kid was third up and I was over near his desk and I noticed some of the pictures he printed. 
It was two people who turned out to be his mother and father on the floor with what I can assume a large quantity of drugs and alcohol. Most of the photos were of his living situation. It was one of the saddest things I've seen. He was a bright and happy person. I got in contact with him a couple months ago and he's living with his grandparents after his mom and dad got into a fight of money. He now shoots a lot of nature photography. A student during holiday break a few years back murdered her mother and her mother's boyfriend brutally with the help of her own boyfriend. Then the bodies laid in the apartment as she left and eventually went to a New Year's party days later. Eventually she was arrested along with her boyfriend. Chilling to think she was sitting in my classroom days before, probably with this whole plan in her head. I substituted at a school for kids with intellectual disabilities and emotional disorders for a while. Majority of the kids had autism to varying degrees. The darker stuff didn't come from the students so much as faculty gossiping about what the students' home lives were like, but from the kids themselves. In one class with more verbal and well-behaved students, occasionally one would, for instance, get frustrated with a problem, start yelling, none of this shit matters, followed by what I would call quasi-suicidal, existential ideation. It would kind of set off a chain reaction in the class where other students would sort of rally along in agreement, 